Hello and welcome to the Car Guy Coffee Podcast. This inner brew at Drive Centric's DC20 has been brought to you by our friends and partners at MXS Solutions, Fixed Ops Digital, M1 Data and Analytics, 321 Ignition, Shop Smart Autos, and VinQ. If you want more brews or you want to find out how to partner with the Car Guy Coffee Podcast, go to carguycoffee.com. Let's brew! What's yeah, going on, yeah. car guys and What's car gals? Up? Good morning. This is Lou Ramirez, the car guy. And this is Fred, the subprime hero. That's What's right, going on? We are Brewing Solutions. Good morning. We got something special that's going inside of your cup today. So make sure that you tag a car guy. Tag, tag a car, a car gal. gal and go. share. Share, 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 share. Let's get this around. We are about to turbocharge this brew. Oh, How man. Excited are you, Fred? I'm excited. There's something about caffeination, but when you throw a little turbocharge in this mm. caffeination, woo, Car Guy Coffee is elite at that point. We're that's excited right, to have right, our guests right. in the office today, in the cafe today, in, cafe. in here, brewing solutions, sharing ideas, sharing his past, sharing his drive. I'm excited to see what this man is all about. He's become a good friend of ours. We've had the opportunity to meet him a few times now. He's been through a lot of things recently, but he's all about his family. All and that's what that. we're about. And when we can find other people that are on that same mission, on that same vibe as us, same frequency, mm. there's nothing better than that because it amplifies. It becomes bigger. It becomes greater. And one thing that Troy has been doing for many years, he's doing great things for his great community of automotive and many other things, actually. This guy's actually got his fingers in a lot of things right now. But automotive is his home, and we're so excited to have him here today, man. I'm pumped. I'm pumped up. And there's another th great thing about him is that he's so – trying to think of the word. We're just going to go with swagalicious, yeah, okay? There you he's go. got some swag about it. him. He knows And deal. we really, really just honor his flow. We honor how he loves people, and we honor – actually what he is to this industry and that's why we are brewing with him today i can't believe that we haven't had him on the show so far but this is the perfect time for you to get some of that turbocharged <laughs> brew but man we were trying to get him on at digital dealer just back in but he was busy we were busy it was a crazy show but man we got to speak with him multiple times. He was wearing the Forgive Focus Fly shirt when he landed in, in when he landed in Vegas. We got to see him. We even got a picture with him with that shirt on. I actually used that for this post for the promo. Bing I love this guy. Well, honestly, the more I speak with him, the more I become, I feel like he's family to me. The more I want to become more of what he does. I want to be involved with what he's doing. And he's doing the same thing with us. And man, does that make me feel good. That makes me know that we're on the right place. We're going on the right mission because he sees that inside of us, too. If we run into man, I, Troy, that's, we're doing something right. That's it, man. Hang out with him. That's it. And, and I know one thing. He he, When he finds friends and he finds people that he networks with, he holds them tight and dear, and he's definitely going to be a loyal person. So I'm excited to be around him. I'm excited to interview him. Let's get him on. the. Let's get him let's up, man. Him. Let's do this. I got to get him on here. Car guys and car gals, help us to make welcome the one, the, the only, only, Mr. Mr. Troy, Troy Spring. Spring. Yeah, yeah, that's good right. Morning. What's up, Troy? Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? Dude, we are good. pumped up. We're excited. We just got back in town from a nice trip across this country, going and seeing some of our dealer partners. And, man, we're back here excited. It's Friday morning, and it's a great way to end our work week with our man, Troy Spring. Brother, you're an amazing person, man, and I'm just honored to have you here, man. We, we love you, and we, we're just excited. So, so welcome cool. to the cafe, brother. Man, I'll tell you what, I feel like just listening to that intro, guys, like it, it's, it matters. So that's what it's all about. But I hear those kind words and I vibed with you guys right away because I felt like you're so authentic. And to me, that's what it's all about. So just a successful morning for me already, just with that swagalicious intro. So anyways, man, I'm so happy to be here and chat with you guys, get to know you even a little bit better, but it has been cool. It's been a cool ride to get to know you a little bit over the last couple of months. And so let's get into this thing, man. I'm excited. Heck yes. yeah, we are ready to do that. Brother, it is such an honor to have you inside of the cafe today. And folks, I want to make sure that you do understand the quality and the caliber of a car guy that we have inside of the building right now, inside of the building. He's in his building. We're inside of ours. Inside but the cafe. We are all together inside <laughs> of the car guy cafe. That's but it. We want the to say welcome cafe. to those that are joining us. Keep tagging car guys, tagging car gals. Drop some coffee cup emojis up in there. Let's you get this algorithm you. shaken up so that plenty of people can hear the incredibleness that's coming from the one, the only Mr. Troy Spring. What's going on? Charles Higgins and my man, Mike 
Higdon. What's happening? Good morning, fellas? Mike. So yes. Good to see you all today. Thank you for joining us. Everyone. Will not. Be Folks, don't, if you got questions, please do top drop them in the comment section. We'll try to get to them as soon as possible. But man, we got some questions for this guy too. But before we do yep. any questions, before we go any further, before we do anything else, three steps. There is three letters. Actually, it's one letter, mm. but it's three words. It's mm. forgive, focus, and fly, my friends. And we need to go through this. This is a secret handshake of ours that we've done before. I've seen Troy do it. He's seen us do it at our when What's we got up, a chance man? to speak at his event. Man, the Man, we, we've been having fun. We've masterminded with this guy. We've traveled. We've been through different booths. We've been to different events. And, man, he's special, folks. So let's get this thing going. The forgive, focus, and fly. You know All the right. deal. You know the deal, Troy. You know how to do these moves. You also know how to rock yeah. that shirt focus with that fly. good groove. So let's get this rocking on three car guys and car gals. Hands on the shoulders. If you're driving, you can do the one. You can have <laughs> one, two, three. Forgive. forgive. Focus. focus. Fly, fly and keep growing, keep growing, keep yeah. growing. Yeah. That's it, man. That's Welcome about. to the exactly. club, Troy. Rory's been in it. You've been an official solutionary the whole time, yeah. but now you're certified, my friend. And we're I love it, man. Happy here, man. We're excited to be pumped up and positive with you. Man, honor, honor, honor. We do got some great people. You got Matthew mm -hmm. Kelly saying what's up to you. You got Eric. Eric what's is a up, good friend Eric? of mine. He's running his own podcast now. He just started it. I'm proud of this guy. It's – oh. He's all about the service drive, man, and he's big deal. I'm, I'm really proud. Eric is somebody that I consider myself as a slight mentor for, and I love that I get a chance to pour into him. He actually did the 75 hard challenge and lost over 40 pounds, bro. Mm -hmm. Holy mackerel. Congrats, Eric. Man. Awesome Eric, job, that's man. amazing. He did oh, a great cool. job, and I'm proud of him, man. And he's got such a positive attitude. He, he's somebody that I can't wait. Hopefully, I can make your show on Sunday early in the morning. Maybe Lou and I could both be there. It's before our wives wake up, so maybe Lou and I can do that. That would be fun. It's 7 o'clock central time i believe which is over there it'll be like six or five we need to try to do that sunday morning if we can okay we all right i got the chance to talk to Eric. we're gonna be in las vegas you know that eric caught, said that he based off of the face so him and his other partner are rocking and rolling he's got some hair on his face eric's got no hair on his face so he's saying that he's the car guy and the other's the subprime hero rocking <laughs> it out but we had some great time them. with them last night in the think tank they are the incredible people that love are out that. there Man, we got Melissa so Hibden. Hello, Melissa. How are you doing this What's morning? Up, and of course, Melissa? you got Scott, Scott. Rising. Scott. This is my man, dude. Scott is an amazing, and his beard is even more amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that beard's epic, man. It is epic. I saw a picture of him without his beard, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> I know, right? That just popped up, right? Since Scott's listening, yeah, you know, that just popped up like his wedding picture or something. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, Who's that? "That's Scott." Yeah, the, the beard just. <laughs> Total Stop transformation. Completely different. We love it, Scott. Man, thank you for being here, folks. We're excited. We got um, uh, Mr. Turbo in the house today, and we have five questions for you, Turbo. Turbo. And the very right, first go. question. Hey, by I'm the way, ask... before we get going, I just Good. want to tell you that intro music never changes. I'm off camera going. Did it in a did? never change that intro music man that stuff's awesome it is awesome we i remember when we found that song and we bought the rights to it we were just so pumped up yeah. right on the money we we went through a lot of songs to find the right one yeah. that would match uh, our feeling yeah so that was it i was like i was jamming out at 8 35 in the morning man that's right man and we're glad that you're jamming out now we're excited we got the blood flowing and that's the whole point is to get the energize get that caffeine in there even if you're not drinking caffeine so right. we're pumped up hey dealers car guy coffee podcast and certified Solutionaries are honored to be part of Team VinQ. The solutions they've been brewing for you to acquire more vehicles, advertise merchandise, and manage those vehicles has made them one of the most sought after dealer partners in the market. They are 100% CGC approved. And when you visit them at VinQ.com, you'll see a whole hill of beans worth of reasons why. Team VinQ, let's brew. First question for you, brother, five liner. First yep. one. It is your why. What drives you every single day to wake up and say, I'm turbocharging this day? What is that? Yeah, to change people's lives. This yes. is an easy one for me. I live it. About five years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that now, I hired Renee Stewart as a coach. And, and I used her for probably about six or eight months then. And one thing that she had me do, and this changed my life, honestly, is she had me do my 100th birthday exercise and live my 100th birthday. And I'm a, you guys know me a little bit. I'm a meditator, a deep thinker, spiritual like that. And so it was very mimic, it mimicked meditation to me. And so what I did was to go to a quiet place and live my 100th birthday. I've written it all out. I know the way she taught me to do it was see every single detail. Where are you sitting? Why are you sitting there? What's it mean to you? Who's walking up the driveway? Who shows up first? What does my daughter at 73 look like? 
Does she have kids? Is she married? What is she saying? Who's there? Listen into conversations organically. Don't force things to happen, but just have this like weird, crazy meditation moment of what that day means to turn a hundred years old. And if you don't get your why out of that day, you don't have one. Right, right. You don't have one. You're not looking you know, for You don't have one. No, because, that is you know, a very cool way to have perspective. I love that, man. That's yeah. Awesome. And it, so what it did for me is it realized, have you ever seen that successories photo? It doesn't matter in a hundred years what your bank account is. and But it matters what if you're diff- important in the life of a child. But to me, it was very similar to that successories photo that I've always loved. And it was, nobody was talking about what kind of car you drove, what kind of house you lived in. Nobody's talking about how much money you had, what the conversations I was listening in on were, I'm glad I met him. He changed my mm. life. Mm. He's, he was authentic. I don't know what I would have done in this moment of my life without my friend being there. He guided me. He mentored me. One of the conversations I remember listening into was my daughter, who you guys know works at our company now, listening into a conversation with her, with somebody I started a business with. Mm. Uh, and he was saying to her, I have a better life because I met him. You know, those kinds of things. That's my why. It's personal and professional growth for all, starting with me, obviously, outwardly to my family and my wife and kids, and then to our employees and to our clients. It's my why is to get up in the morning and change people's lives and make sure that they're better personally and professionally. And every Hmm. single thing that I do, I feel if I accomplish that, then my life's going to be pretty good. And I know that's a fact. I can, you're not just saying that folks. I know Troy yes. now, granted, like I said, I've only met him in moments and had great times with him every single time. We've had great conversations. We've done some zoom meetings together. We've talked about each other's past, but no doubt that is hundred percent facts folks. He's not just saying that for the camera. He really cares about his family. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen him with his daughter. I've seen him with his, with everything, his family, what he's doing right now and how he's trying to raise his, your son. I mean, you do, you do some great stuff, man. You're an amazing guy and he's hundred percent right. That is how you need to look at that folks, man. It's not about how much money you have, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Money makes life. Yeah, listen, I love it. <laughs> Don't get me too. I do too. And it's not about the how it's not, it is, but it's nice to have those things, right? But yeah. at the end of your life, when you're, when you're nearing the sunset of your life, it's about the legacy you left. It's about yeah. the people that you've influenced. It's about the love that you've left on this planet. That's going to continue after you leave. That's the thing. Yeah, How I, will you be remembered? How will you be remembered? I'm in the middle. Listen, I'm going to just put this out there for you guys. You know that about eight, eight years ago or so, I guess it was, I published Turbocharge Your Life, right? Yes. And, you know, and so I'm in the middle of writing another book right now. It's really all about legacy. It's all about the why. It's why are we doing what we're doing? What's it matter? And for me, I don't necessarily, I'm a big believer that you don't, and I know this isn't car guy stuff, but it goes to your question of why. For me personally, I don't think that when you expire physically that you're gone. I, my dad's been gone 10 years, and I think I work harder now to make him proud than I ever have. And by everything he taught me, and I'm just using him as an example, my mom, my grandfather, I just feel like, and you guys know I just lost my brother two weeks ago. That sucked. I just think that, I just think that you live on. That's your legacy. And how much of that can you do? How can you impact lives even when you are gone? And, and how long does that last generationally? So yeah, man, I'm with you. We, you and I are on the same page when it comes to why we're doing what we're doing. It's all about the legacy. Absolutely. Man. That legacy is key and that's in place. And to be clear, everybody, I have, we 100% believe that we are eternal beings. The yeah. Bible even says that before you were created in your mother's womb, I knew you. So after this life particular, this shell of a life expires, right? And we do what we're supposed to do here. There is more and there is beyond. The great thing is that we get the opportunity to be in this moment in time now. We were picked and we were chosen to be alive now so that we can impact the people inside of the world that we are designed to impact. And I am so glad that I am alive at a time where I get to see Troy do his thing. We get to learn from him. We get to speak with him. And we get to also, like on this show, we get to highlight him. But we also get to learn from him a little bit. Oh, man. There is so much much. of a bank of knowledge that's tied up in this incredible car guy right here that I wish we could just open that vault up and spill it out. That's a beautiful part. Yeah, we can open it up. Hey, dealers, franchise and independent, we have some great news for you and your number one sales pro. Your Your website. website. Partner with Team MXS, we have the ability to pull you out of that cookie cutter, merry-go-round, and help your website embody what it means to do business with you. From the highest quality production to the most strategic optimization, we want to help you connect better to the ever-changing market. 
We owe it to you and your team to at least let us do a quick and free checkup on your website. We can't wait to hear from you. Go, Go to, to teammxs.com. Back to the show. We're going to open up as much as we can in the time that we have today. Folks, yes. this would take for a long time to be able to get all the information. Troy said a moment ago, what he's talking about isn't just applying to automotive. This applies to life. Understand that when we talk about automotive, Lou and I, we're, we, that's what we're passionate about, but we're also passionate about growth in life, that's right. in family, in love, whatever it is, with your faith, with your whatever that you have, with, with whatever that you're looking for, we want to be able to impact on that because life is about that journey. Life is about it 100%. It's not about the beginning. It's not about the end. It's about that time in between. How are you spending that time in between and what are you leaving and what impression are you putting on this planet? You know, a lot of us, it's okay. We have bad days. There's no one that's perfect on this planet. That's why there's the biggest room in the world. It's the room for improvement, right? And that's the thing that I love about what we do. Yeah, we all, we're leaders. We're all examples of what you can do and how you could become things. But we all each, the reason why we are where we're at is because we're always looking for that room for improvement. That's right. And I love that. And man, this is already impactful. I'm already excited about this interview so far. So I know this, I, I want to just keep talking about the why. I can keep going, but. <laughs> we can. Dad, that's a long, that's an all day long conversation. The why, man. It really and, is. Uh, good man. morning, Danny. Good morning, Brian. I see you guys just joined. Yeah, so what's good up? Morning, yeah, good morning. morning. Facebook user. We got Eric Sanchez Barber. Bosa, what's going on all the yeah. way from Texas? Man, I can't wait to come down and visit. But yeah, there's amazing people. Danny, love you, brother. Yes. Great people. Brian Ortega, genius when it comes to marketing. One of the best yeah. marketers I've ever met, dude. Just so fun love and it. so different, yeah. man. So I love Brian. I'm so glad he's in my network. We just have the best network in the world, I swear. And you guys are building a good one. I saw all the people that you've already interviewed, and I thought, man, I am late to the party. You had some rocks. <laughs> and that was and the first that was season. The one, that was yeah. first That's season. Awesome. That, and that, that was all the way up to, like, beginning of this year, the year before. Yeah. Now we're onto a whole new season, and it's been even more impact. <laughs> We've really... It'd be a 50-minute intro if we, if we <laughs> dropped everybody in there right now. We're going to have to make some different... <laughs> the same song the whole time. But yeah. seriously, listening to the why and understanding, folks, why it is that we take that why as the needle on the end of this thread to weave together this right. entire show. We, we understand that why does impact many other people. Again, we're honored to have other show hosts in here, other creatives, other incredible car guys, understanding that your why and doing what you do helps to ignite that why inside of somebody else. When I see Troy being the best version of himself or expressing how it is he's supposed to live to his full capacity, it inspires me that one, not only do I have the ability to do, but I have the liberty to do. There you go. And understanding that you doing you to the fullest helps to empower somebody else to do them. Again, much shout out to Eric and Joe from the service drive live show telling us that we've helped to impact them my well, brother blesses my heart we, when he we, says that. we are encouraged by that but there's something inside of them that needs to come out and troy does a great job of helping to point at somebody help pull out of them what needs to come out of them and help make the best version of them come out whether he knows it or not right it makes me better having a conversation with him and his why is fused into all of that but no matter what industry he would have made it in, he would be accomplishing great things. My question for the car guys and car gals that are out there, we want to know, Troy, Spring, Mr. Turbo, what made you come and turbocharge the auto industry? What brought you to us? So, little secret, uh, you can figure out how old I am when I tell you this, but it's my 30. <laughs> It's my 35th year. I sold my wow. first car in 1987. I was 18 years old. Ooh. And the why at that point was I was broke. I owed my dad $500 and I answered an ad to sell cars. At that age, I guess I was a little ahead of my time when in the interview, the guy said, why should I hire you? I said, what other 18 year old has read the art of the deal and how to master the art of selling? And he said, yep, you're hired. Let's go. Uh, you know, my why at the time was I felt, and I felt like I didn't want to be stagnated by just a regular job. Even at 18, I, I really just wanted to, you know, to explore what it meant to have unlimited opportunity. And so I got that job and honest to gosh, I got to tell you guys, I never looked back. I just never, ever looked back. Sold that first car. I, I was blessed, I guess. I had great managers and a good support system in those very early days. I learned, you know, the right way to, to go about the car business at, at, from every angle. And then early on, I had this goal of becoming a, a general manager. I loved, I looked at my general manager when I was like 22 years old and went, man, that guy's got a cool life. I want to be him. So that was a goal of mine. I did that kind of mid thirties. So I did, you know, at the height of my retail career, 
Uh, I managed four stores and had four general managers that kind of answered to me and it was at a group of 11 stores. So I really learned a lot about the retail space at that point. But, you know, how it gets started, man, that's 35 years ago. It was really, I owed my dad $500. And <laughs> by the way, I'll tell you, this is awesome. That is so cool. I grew up pretty conservative in New Hampshire with very conservative parents. And when I gave him back the first $500 after my first paycheck in one week in 1987, my dad looked yeah. at me like, how did you get that money in a week? I said, I sold a couple cars. <laughs> <laughs> so that was back in the days where you had like a slip and they just paid you like weekly. It wasn't. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty awesome. I'm like, here's your money. And I never looked back. It was awesome. Yes, it is. It's it, that's the so thing about I love about automotive is that as a salesperson, automotive, there's a lot of instant gratification that you get. It's not if you know the deals go quicker. It's not like buying a house or selling any real estate. Even selling an RV can take months. Right. So like it's literally you sell a car, they deliver, it gets funded very quick. You get paid at the end of the week. It was very. I remember those. I used to get the pink slips almost. They were like they or yellow. I can't remember. They used to bring me these little slips. I got them put away. I saved every one I've ever done. But they give me the slips, and I would look at them like, cool. I made some money. You knew that at the end of the week, you're good. Right. Yeah. You're like, oh, I got a check. It was a lot of fun to get it that way. Instant gratification. It was fun to put cash in your pocket. I remember my very first big check I had, it was thousands of dollars and I had it cashed it all. I was like, yeah, yeah. I want this cash. Mm -hmm. And I go to McDonald's of all places. Right. <laughs> and I'm there and I happen to run into one of my old friends. And I remember I was trying to brag. I was feeling so good. I was like, dude, look at this. I did this in two weeks, man. This is how, and he's, dude, you shouldn't carry around money like that. People are going to jack you. <laughs> <laughs> And, and by the way, I just saw Live Free or Die. I, I didn't see who that was. My apologies. Oh, Charles. Charles. Yeah. Hey, Charles. I'm, that My first car was sold in New Hampshire. Live Free or Die, man. Uh, That's right. There, that first 29 years of my life there. It was uh, great times. That's awesome. Charles Higgins, a good friend of ours. Incredible. He, he's an incredible car guy. He's, and he he's, will sneak up on you. Yeah, he will just show up in the showroom out of nowhere. He's three hours that. away. He's done it multiple times. Drove all the way here and he doesn't let you know. He might send like a message on one of your on your posts that what says, What are you guys doing today? What are you guys doing today? And all of a sudden he's boom, he's at your store. You're like, Whoa, what's up, Charles Higgins? So we always call it being Higgins. Yeah. So that's like our thing. If someone shows yeah, up awesome. or we go show up someone with unannounced, but welcomed, of course, it's being Higgins. And yeah. I love Charles for that. Charles, now you, when you come visit, bro, we always got free time. Come check us out. As long as we're not out of town, come by the cafe. You know the deal. I love you for being here today. And I didn't know that he was from New Hampshire. So that's really cool. Small world, small state. So that's really cool so that you guys know each other, not know each other, but from that same area. But that being said, yes. exciting, man. I, I love that you're in the business. The business needed you. And I think you needed the business too. And that's what's so cool. It was one hand shaking the other and it just kept developing and kept growing. We know you're enjoying the show so far. We just wanted to quickly remind you about our partners at Big Ops Digital and how they are Automotive's premier service marketing and technology company. Not only proud sponsors of the Car Guy Coffee podcast, but they also serve as your dedicated point of contact for all your online service marketing related needs. Servicing dealerships throughout the U.S. and Canada, the mission is to create a better online experience for your service customers while using data intelligence to drive more fixed operations revenue. If you want to take your service marketing efforts to the next level, go to fixedopsdigital.com. Back to the show. Let's go. Now, as you were coming up, now your first motivation was obviously to get some money to pay back your pops. Yep. But what kept you driving and who showed you pivot? So what I would what I mean by that is we all have mentors in this. I look at you as a mentor. I look at Glenn Lundy as a mentor. I look at a lot of people. El Patron is a mentor of mine. For you, as you've been coming up in this game, who has been somebody that's mentored you or people that have mentored you? Yeah, man, I, I've had a bunch. I've been really lucky throughout different periods of life. You need a different mentor. You need a little different guidance, uh, you know, somebody as you continue to elevate your game. So I'll take you through a couple that I think were, were really important to me. One was a guy by the name of Mitch Cook. Mitch was my general manager when I was 20 years old. He's one of those guys I looked up and said, man, I want to be Mitch. Yeah. Just a really know. cool guy. And so he was a bigger city guy. He came from Boston like Route 128 Oldsmobile for all those old car guys listening. And they'll be like, I, you know, that's that was kind of a, a hammer store back in the day, right? Very so cool. uh, he comes to our little town of Keene, New Hampshire, and is the general manager of the store that I worked at. And that was one of those kind of blessings that I got where I learned how to sell a car the right way. I was 20 years old and went to work in gray pants, blue blazer, white shirt, red, white, and blue striped necktie, it was our standard issue uniform because we were selling import cars in a domestic kind of area. 
Yeah. Um, so everything we did had need to be patriotic. Right and, on. Um, and then beyond that, just that kind of discipline that I learned from that, they would send you home, like wrong color, gray, go home. And so you'd go up to the tower and, and Mitch ran a really strict store. And I learned at 20 years old, when I went to the tower, it would be like, Hey, Troy, like salesman rushes up. You don't know a whole lot. You're like, Hey, these people want to know what their trade's worth or, or <laughs> these, these, these people got to go or whatever. So you'd go up to the tower and the way I was trained in the very, very early days was my sales manager would slow everything down and he'd go, Hey, Troy, who do you have? I'd be like, I got John and Susie and where do they live? And did they have any kids? And I'd be like, I got to talk about the car deal. They're, I want to know if you know your people. So it was That's like, I learned real quick. Important. I better go to the tower and know who I have, where they live, where they bought their last car, yes. if they have kids, if they have kids, what they do for sports. I had yeah. to know everything about them and, and not only know everything about them, then all of a sudden we start talking about the car deal. And again, I mean, this, this is like standard tower stuff, right? 20 years old, going to the tower. And we get to the car stuff and they'd say, do we have selection? And I'd say, yeah, they're on a Mazda 626. And did they drive it? If you said no, they just pointed, go do your job, then I'll do mine. Right. I mean, I was 20 years old and I would go to the tower and I would hear, again, thanks to Mitch and his training, it would go through all that whole process. Did they drive it? Yes. Okay. And what do they love about it? What do they dislike about it? Okay, great. Did you do a service walk? right? Did you sell the, the dealership and did you take them through that whole process? Yes. And it, if the figures and terms are agreeable, are they ready to take delivery now? Yes. Great. Okay. Give me your worksheet. Like I couldn't hand a worksheet to my mm -hmm. desk manager until I knew my customer, knew them well, had selection, drove a car, did a service walk and the whole nine yards. Unless I went up to the tower and said, I'm stuck. You know, first mentor, Mitch Cook, because without awesome. that discipline of learning Mitch. how to sell a car. Shout out to Mitch, Mitch Cook, man. Cook that is exactly right. right. I mean, you need to know your customers, build rapport, qualify them, show them around, do your job. Because when you spend this much time, you can't see it, but this much time outside, this is how much time you spend negotiating, my friends. It's so yeah, important. I agree. Yeah, that was what I was taught. This much time building value, this much time collapsing, closing the deal. Oh, that's it. it always and, it, it uh, works that way. So that took me through a long time. Like even when I was a general manager and a platform manager in retail, I taught that process. Uh, I remember a time, and this goes to another mentor of mine, very good friend of mine, Joe Balby. He taught me mm -hmm. a lot when I was a platform manager. So once I started running stores, he was a guy that ran all 11. And I, I just learned a lot from him. And I remember this one day I was running a Hyundai store and it all came together, just control. And we had, it was a rock and rolling day, man. I'm talking like 95 ups. It wasn't even a super Ooh. sale. I just was, one of the reasons I got into advertising is when I was at that Hyundai store, I really learned how to drive traffic like crazy. So I had 95 ups in the day and all of a sudden the towers getting swarmed with sales guys. And again, you got this different level of people and one guy's a, a pro and doing everything right. And the next guy's going, Hey, these people want to know what their trades were. Desk is getting swarmed. And I remember I ran out to the parts department, found some red tape, ran back to the desk, which had three, three sales managers working deals. I put tape eight feet away, you know, apart from the uh, desk. And I just said, everybody bought, you know, and it was a Saturday. It was awesome. It's just too much fun. Right. Mm -hmm. So I got everybody behind the red line. You come up and we'll focus on each deal one at a time. So we went straight back into what Mitch taught me. Mm -hmm. And this was 20 years later. It was, who do you have? And we slowed everything down and we ended up having a record breaking day and everybody learned. So don't rush through the deal, slow it down, no matter how busy you are and work one-on-one -on -one with the sales manager, make sure the deal's set up properly, make sure you're TO'd at the proper time. But I, I would tell you that one of the, one of the mentors at that point for me was Joe. I learned an awful lot about management, hiring, and unfortunately firing at that time as well. When you're running four stores with 200 employees, that does happen. But the proper way to go about running a business, just with your heart in the right place, with your ego in the right place and making tough decisions. And so that would be my second one, I would guess, at that point wow. in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then here's somebody that I think third, and I'm missing a lot of people, man. There's been so many. Craig, well, it's okay. You know, so it's like going up and winning a Grammy award and trying to announce everybody that's yeah, done. Yeah. You, you know, look, I could mention so many people, Tracy no Myers, doubt. Craig Locker, the likes, the whole nine yards. And, and honestly, you know, both of those guys deserve a lot of my attention here on this matter of mentors. When I was first becoming, a, uh, I learned an awful lot from Craig and, and from Tracy, uh, just about this world and how to go again about it with the right 
right heart and right mind, yes. um, you know, to build a business without ego. And, and, you know, cause you see a lot of that in this business, right? There's a ton of ego. It's, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think sometimes people are a little bit misguided. So I think Tracy <laughs> and Craig really helped me stay on path there in the early days. Absolutely. And recently I've, I'll just give a shout out because I love his presence. I love what he's all about. I spent a lot of time talking to David Long. And I'll, I just think he's got a really good executive presence about him. Oh, I've got a lot of clients too right now that have taught me a lot. Point blank, just really, if you're a client of mine and you're listening, how much you changed my life and I've learned from you. So there's too many to mention, but my gosh, there's every one of, I'm so lucky to have the relationships I have with our clients. Well, you get more and more enriched, the more excellence you allow to have poured into you. And yeah. you are an abundance of knowledge. And we talked about it earlier. You are a bank, a plethora of information locked right into on. you, but it's because you're so receptive to having great people pour into you. Like you were poured high quality car guy tactics and understanding from the very beginning, from the very start, you were told yes. how to actually get it done Faster by slowing it down a little bit, by yeah. allowing everything to be processed. Quick question. Do you know what Smart Pixel 2.0, Location IQ, and Audience IQ have in common? You know I do. They are solutions that our friends and proud sponsors, M1 Data and Analytics, are brewing for automotive and the auto. Once again, you're right, my friend. <laughs> and we want to invite all of our audience to go to m1-data.com to see how they can help propel your business forward with the right data insight. Go check them out at m1-data.com. Let's brew. Come on now, back to the show. Even working inside of a martial art or working inside of dance, you slow the tempo down so that you can line up the steps, the motions, the movements, and the forms so that then when it's time, to activate in real time, it's faster than you can even think. You yeah. automatically do it in the timing that it has to happen. And we absolutely love that. That's some car guy isms that you have to have. Car guys and car gals understand we are in a fast paced business. And the communication with the customer can often get as fast as we're thinking in our head that we need to go. And we're missing the translation between us and them. And we have to slow that down for them just a little bit. One, to make sure that we even heard what they said. So many times we are so quick to say everything that's happening at the store that we don't even understand what the customer is saying to us to help us give them what it is that they need. And we need to slow it down and build that relationship. That's the key. The only thing that's going to make sure that you still are helping that customer down the road past this one transaction is a relationship. Mm. And that relationship is always going to be anchored to the great conversation that you have in the meantime, the anniversaries that are coming up, the great family victory, somebody's graduating, whatever those are, give room for those as you become a person to the customer instead of just the one facilitating the transaction. And I love that. But at the same time, you've had great people pour into you and you've given them room. Even people he's pouring into, he's learning something from. Understand yes. folks that every conversation you have, there's something to be learned, good or bad. Mm -hmm. Every perspective that you run into, I don't care if whatever perspective, I'm talking every perspective, even oh. if it seems completely left field, right? Those are important because you're learning something from that. I remind you of, oh, that's why I do this way. That's why I do it this way <laughs> or why I'm going to do this even better because you want to make sure that it's done right. Now, we all need to understand that. But the best is when you have a conversation where you're pouring into somebody and then they throw back at you and you're like, whoa, mind blown, right? And, and it happens yeah. quite a bit if you are listening and if you slow down. That's why I love about that. That whole translation that he mentioned at the beginning when he was talking about Mr. Mitch Cook, when he was talking about how you go out there and he's asking you questions before he would even let you mm -hmm. present a pencil, slowing it down, that translates to life, folks. Mm -hmm. When you're building relationships with people, listen, slow it down. Relationships don't have to go that fast. Just like meeting a, a, your, your future wife. If you went too fast in a lot of cases, relationship didn't work. May have been a lot of fun, Mm -hmm. but it didn't work out because you went too fast. You didn't learn each other completely, right? You're done. Hey, and by you're the done. way, I'll, I'll jump in there real quick. And I'm, I don't want to be too warm and fuzzy and, and have people say, are you freaking kidding me? Just, but a little mentor in my life right now would be my wife. I love that is true. You know, though. I, I, we've been together about 10 years and I would say just blunt and honest, like I've learned so much from her about life and 
They always say behind every good man's a great woman and no BS guys. Like you know, mentors don't have to be in business. They can be right next to you. They can be family members, wife, whatever. It's just th those people ground you and I get up and I go to work and, and I'm a better version of myself because I have so much support at home. So for what it's worth, I, that's not a, it's not a shameless type plug or anything. It's no, just I don't know. I don't, I, if you're really grounded at home, I think it helps at work. That is the foundation, folks. If you want to see somebody that's truly at peace and successful inside of their business, you'll notice that there's something going on at home. That fire, that identity, yeah, is core at home. And I think that's the big thing that happened during the pandemic. I think that was the, when everybody got pulled away. Everybody had to go focus in at home, right? They started to figure out the relationships they have a little bit more, right? They're spending more time with their spouse. They're spending more time with their kids. They're spending more time with themselves to figure out, man, I like this. I don't like this. I want this. I want more of it. I know it gave me a bit of an addiction to having my wife around so much. Yeah, to having to being home so much. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I wanted more of that. And the thing is that all of those things still work together for the good, as Man. they always do, as they always, always. do. But I know that my wife basically raise this boy <laughs> you know, still raising me yeah. and i love that she she keeps me accountable she keeps me wanting to be more i love to impress my wife when i can impress her i know i did something special right it's just it's so fun i could tell her about all these special shows i do and all these people who pat me on my back and she's oh that's cool fred yeah cool, cool. but when i do something real like there's something that's really impactful my wife will let me know and that man that feels so great mm -hmm. she really has and i've been with my wife um for about 20 years now i've been married for 17 and it's been an amazing voyage with her. It's been a hit up and down, but you, I love that you said that as a mentor, that is like huge. Like your first person's ever said that. And I love that because that's, I feel the same way, my friend. I yeah. I mean, look, it's, the same to me, it's, it, it just works. And what you just said is so funny. There's times when I'll say something to my wife and if anybody who knows her will say, yeah, he's dead on right about this. And she, it's, it'll just be blase to her. Like, it'll be a big deal to me. And I think it's super cool. And she'll just be like, yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's, that's my you know, wife. I, right? Yeah, what you just said. I know if I impress her, then it was actually pretty good. It was something special <laughs> at that point. But don't get me wrong. She definitely encourages, loves, and does all these things and really has a lot of faith in me and, and, and puts a lot of trust in what I do. I travel all yeah. over the country. That's a tr You have to have a trusting relationship to do that yeah. and not have any friction. And man, does she allow me to do that. But she had to raise me to be able to do that. It's right. sending your 18-year-old kid to college. <laughs> she no spent 17 years. She's like, I think you're ready to go to college now, Fred. Let's go. No, I, I'm glad that you honor your wife. Your wife is obviously, when you said behind every good man, there's a great woman. And I believe, I say besides. Besi or actually, in my case, in front of every great fair, man. Fair, yeah. Is a, is fair. I, I, I'd but, agree with that. Yeah, it's, I, they lead the way. They do, and they do it with such class, and they don't need any accolades. Like, you didn't have to say that to make her happy. You She'd wanna... probably be mad I said it, but whatever. I, I know what you mean. That's that. <laughs> our wives will, our, all our wives would get along extremely well. Yeah. They're yeah. cut from the like, same Why class. do you say that? Because it's freaking true. Because yeah. it's true, and I love you. You know, it's like I was telling my wife, we're going to be at a speaking engagement this weekend on Monday. We're going to have a chance to speak in front of a great group of people, and we're pumped up about it. And we get to talk about our lives. And I keep telling them, I was like, we, we need to make our wives stand up, but they'll kill us if we do that. If it wasn't for our wives, please stand up and give them a round of applause. They, they will kill us if we do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And but they like, would be so mad at us. They'd be like, you better not better do that. Not. I will not better stand not. up. I'm like, oh, you will stand up. <laughs> and, and hey, on that note of the mentor thing, I would just say to anybody listening, just look around you. Any interaction that you have with somebody, you can learn something from them. It exactly. doesn't mean they don't need to be like, the biggest mentor in your life. I just try to learn a little something from everybody I meet. And Love uh, that story. I think that you can, mentors can come in all shapes, sizes, and, and can be a, a, at any part of your peripheral vision. You don't have to go out and seek like some big league. Just learn something from someone.